Dear Spadeev, Galeer, Agus Falta, you're welcome to LTV <coughs> for this week's chapter in our current series of A Story That Should Be Told. The title of this week's episode is The Brown Scapular. Uh, now, the history of the Brown Scapular goes back 760 years or more uh, to the year 1251 to a town in England called Isles Fort when Our Lady appeared to St. Simon Stock and presented her him with the brown scapular and on doing so she spoke the following words. This shall be a privilege for you and for all Carmelites that anyone dying in this habit shall not suffer eternal fire. In time, the church extended this privilege to the laity who were willing to wear the brown scapular in perpetuity. Now, beside me, I have a man named Peter Roach, and Peter is a man who has perpetually worn the brown scapular for more years than he can remember. In today's story, Peter tells of an event in his life and of his belief that he was saved from a serious injury and possibly from death by the power of the brown scapular. Peter Roach, Falter Roach, you're welcome to LTV. Thank you. Now, Peter, you're here to tell a story of a, a serious incident that happened in 1991. It involved an attack on you by a bull. And you are certain in your belief that you were saved by the brown scapula. Yeah. Now, first of all, tell me what you were doing that the bull attacked you. I went into the, I went into the field with the bull and, and, and the, the other cattle, the heifers. Um, I wanted to get the near tag number one, the heifers. And when I was there, I said to the bull, I saw him praying down his head and coming for me. Yes. I had a fencer post in my hand and I thought that it'd protect me. <clears throat> I hit him with the post, all right, and it stopped him for a small bit. Yes. But I saw him come me again. Mm -hmm. And I never remember till he hit me for some reason, I don't know. But anyway, <clears throat> I remember we down the ground under him. And I was trying to keep him off in my two hands. And I don't know how long I was there, but... Eventually, my scapula came out from inside my shirt. The way that yes. I was wearing. And uh, <clears throat> I just thought to myself, I'll put this back in and let it get broken because other times they came out if I do something and to it get got broken. broken. Yes, yeah. And I took out my scapula and I took, put my scapula back in inside my shirt. And I said before I put my hand back in the bowl again, he was after completely changing and he pushed me nice and easy a couple of times. Yes. And then he walked away, away down the field, down to the rest of the cattle. And I was able to get up and walk away. Okay, very good. Now, um, clearly the bull was angry oh, and aggressive. Yeah, very well angry. And you were holding him actually to protect yourself. Oh, yeah. And, uh, after the scatter came out, yeah. uh, the uh, sort of a change seemed to come over everything. And the bull, um, instead of uh, attacking you violently, actually pushed you gently yeah. uh, away. Now, you also mentioned um, another unusual aspect of this uh, incident was that uh, normally when something occurs like that, cattle are young uh, the heifers were young yeah, yeah. and naturally they would be inquisitive and normally they would stay bunched around. That's right. But that isn't what happened. They were <clears throat> I noticed that they were all down at the very end of the field as far down they could go. Yes. And like they were, so like someone had driven them down there. Yes. And just in case there's any doubt in anybody's mind that the bull was uh, unstable and hard to deal with, uh, two days later when the men were trying to round him up, uh, and take him, have him taken to the factory. It wasn't easy for them to. No, uh, he wasn't. He, he, he when they went to go into the field to bring him out, he got he got very cross again, and they get the, they had to get the tractor to drive around after him in order to tire him out. Yes. 
to be able to get him into the cr- into the cabin. To be able to manage him. Yeah. Okay. Now, Peter, you were uh, taken to hospital by ambulance. Yeah. And uh, while you were in hospital, our good friend, LTV man, Dan Joe Kelleher, came to visit you. That's right. And in the course of the conversation, you discovered that Dan Joe had actually previously shown a program about the brown scapular and about people who had been saved by that. And now, after you saw a tape of that program, uh, what came into your mind after that? Well... While I was in the hospital, I was thinking, why he didn't come down my chest yes. or anything yes. about what, what happened that he mm-hmm. didn't. My two sides were very sore yes. and got a bad chest infection out of it. But Danjo came and I asked Danjo about the brown scapular and he gave me the tape of the brown scapular. Mm-hmm. And so then I could see <coughs> that the brown scapular saved so many people. Yes. That there were so many people saved by just wearing the bone scapular. And you concluded that you were another one. Oh, yeah. Saved. Okay. Oh, yeah. Now, uh, from that, um, and maybe as by way of paying back, you felt that you should uh, tell your story and promote the bone scapular. But like many of us, I suppose, uh, with various things that we plan, you let it drift. Yeah, uh, from day to day. Yes. You know, and and, and sh- you put it off until tomorrow all the time. That's right. Yeah. Yes. Now, uh, however, an event occurred in 2010, yeah. 14th of April, which is two days before the feast day of Mount Carmel. That's right. And uh, this event involved a fire in your home. Now, we actually have some photographs here, but perhaps you just start and tell us a little bit about the fire before I show the pictures. Well, uh, um, to the morning, 11 o'clock at night, we were in bed. <coughs> And um, one of our sons, David, he, w- he was gone out early in the evening. But Stephen, was, he, usually he would go to at 11 o'clock. And um, I knew Stephen was gone all right. But I thought I saw David uh, coming back in. Mm. And I could hear this noise of things around the kitchen. Yes. I thought. And then, after a while, the, the smoke alarm went off. Mm. So I got up then when I yes. have a look. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, couldn't go into the to where the where the fire was, and I had to go to the front door and go around. Mm. And when yes. I was passing the window outside, the flame would go up the the curtains up inside. The curtains, yes. Now, just to, uh, to uh, illustrate how severe the fire actually was, um, on this picture here, uh, we can see the smoke damage. And we see uh, as well some plaster taken from the wall, from the intense heat. Now, I'm not sure if the viewers will be able to see this, but this is all smoke blackened. But over here, within, I suppose, three or four inches of it, we have a picture, we have a calendar of Our Lady of Mount Carmel, uh, which we have right here. And it is completely unscathed, (coughs) completely undamaged, and that's the actual calendar that was on the wall yeah. on that night yeah. and no trace of, of damage. And you saw that as being quite uh, extraordinary. Sure, of course, yeah. Yes. Everything else was damaged. Damaged around it. Yeah. That escaped, yes. Mm-hmm. And again, you linked that in, of course, with the brown scapula. Yeah, Our Lady of Mount Carmel. Did. Um, uh, it was Our Lady of Mount Carmel who had presented the, yeah. the, the scapula to St. Simon's Stock in 1251. Okay, now just um, two more photographs showing the damage. And down here again we see where the plaster uh, fell from the wall from the intensity of the heat. There's a rosary bead uh, hanging there. There's the same calendar of uh, Our Lady of Mount Carmel. And this is another picture again showing the intensity of the heat. How these figurines here have been so burned. Uh, the calendar unscathed and the rosary bead unscathed as well uh, so this acted like um you said a warning but maybe a, a bit of a hint a bit yeah. of a nudge to you yes, that's right, that yeah. you should go and do what you were promising to do to yourself and uh, begin to promote the yeah. scapular mm-hmm. and to tell your story that's right. so what did you do to promote the scapular after that well i got the little booklet there the garment of grace and yes. um, 
I was sent to England from the can't think of the name of the book place in England either. But they would get him from the from the state somewhere. And it was very hard to get him. You couldn't get him then maybe you wouldn't get I wouldn't able to get enough of him. Yes. Yes. So I, I thought you were, that I'd go and get them printed myself. Yes, yeah. at your own expense. And now, this is the booklet that Peter has just told us about, The Garment of Grace. And um, there's Our Lady uh, of Mount Carmel. And written on it is, Whomsoever dies clothed in this habit shall not suffer eternal fire. So there's that booklet. And uh, you make it available to people and you give it out to people. Um, anybody that wants it. Anybody that wants it. And yeah. uh, we will be able to put a phone number later, uh, perhaps at the end of the program, uh, if anybody wants to contact Peter to get uh, the booklet. Now, the booklet is actually um, very informative. And there are a number of stories in it that are well worth reading. But uh, one that took my uh, interest, uh, Peter, was the one uh, titled Conversion. Yeah. Uh, will you tell us that story, please? It's on page 25 of the book. It was about a man that was um, picked up <clears throat> in New York, in the streets of New York one night. He was dying. And he was taken to the hospital. And when the nurse was washing him, she found out he was wearing a brown scapula. And uh, they called for the priest. And um, when the priest was praying over him, he said, I'm not a Catholic at all. And they said, how will you wear a bone scapular if we're not a Catholic? Well, he said, a friend of mine gave me a bone scapular years ago and told me to say one Hail Mary every day. And it turned out that he received all the sacraments. He dashed him, do you want to be a Catholic? And he said, yeah. <clears throat> and he received all the sacraments that night before he died. Yes. So a lady saved him. Yes, so the promise that she made uh, oh, yeah. was kept. Yeah. Okay. And, of course, Peter, on uh, another page for the back, there's the story of uh, what happened to yourself and your uh, escape from the bull. I think it's on... He's 37, and um, it, it's a very, uh, very easy book to read, very nicely produced, and uh, certainly Peter would be delighted to, to give it to anybody, and his own story is there on page uh, 37. Now, Peter, um, clearly uh, you are here today keeping your promise uh, that you had made all that time ago to promote the scapular and this is why yeah. you are on television oh, and yeah. this is why we are doing this program That's right, yeah. because you have a story that should be told well i think it, it should be told yes and i think you have not one story but but two because you had the fire as well as yeah. well and I, I think you mentioned to me earlier the fire actually uh, went out by itself oh, yeah. oh, the fire was completely gone before the fire brigade came yes um, now, Peter, some general <coughs> questions. Um, all of us are formed and shaped in our lives, in our way of thinking, our outlook, our philosophy, by the homes in which we were brought up. Yeah. And you were telling me earlier that the faith and prayer was an important part of your home, as it was of many homes in those days, of course. Yeah. So you might first of all tell me, about what symbols or signs of the faith could be found in your family home when you were a young lad? <coughs> well, there was the, the sacred heart picture and the sacred heart lamp. It was always there, kept lighting. Um, along with a, a lot of other holy pictures, we call them. And it was in every room in the house, there was holy pictures hanging. Mm -hmm. And there was always plenty of holy water. Yes. And... and Go ahead, yeah. We were always taught to bless ourselves with the holy water and we go out and go, where we'd be going. Yes. And um, would your mother um, or father perhaps uh, shake the holy water on themselves or on the oh, house? Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. yeah. All the time, yeah. Would they shake it on animals? Oh, yeah, definitely in animals, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. So they clearly had a, a belief in that. Oh, yeah. Now, earlier as well, and maybe this is something that many people don't think of, um, 
when we need uh, water, for example, we can access it through a reserv- uh, from a reservoir. Uh, electric current is accessed from a power station. Uh, we can access people now anywhere in the world via a mobile phone. But many people in the past uh, believe very strongly in their great faith that God had a great power. Mm-hmm. And we say that at Mass, you know, we refer to uh, God, uh, the Father Almighty, and we say <coughs> Lord God of power and might. And uh, many people would maybe not be aware that that power is available to be accessed. And uh, in the past, was accessed, as you just said, through prayer oh, yeah. and through mm-hmm. the holy pictures and that. Yes, now, you. what prayer would you normally say in your home as a young lad uh, to access the help of God, which we always asked for? Oh, the family rose, was always said. And, without uh, fail. Without fail, yeah. Mm. And uh, confession <laughs> once a month, all that in that hymn. Yes. To keep you on the straight and narrow. <laughs> yes. Yes. And, um, well, I mean, there was <clears throat> a lot of holy books as well. The Pharisees and the, the Messenger and the, what other ones? I can't think of the other ones. Yeah, the the, the, and the, the Africa, Africa was another one, I yeah, think. Yeah, the African, yes, the African. Yeah, uh, yeah, they would come to the schools, I think, and, and the school children would distribute them around, I think, in, 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 in those days. Maybe, yeah. yeah. And um, now, the rosary, would you all kneel down around there? We all kneel down, yeah. On the chairs? Yeah. Yeah, elbows on the chair. Oh, yeah. yeah, chair back yes. to the front. That's yes. right. Uh, okay. And um, would it ever happen that um, sometimes then, uh, when people would be deeply in prayer, Somebody else might uh, uh, spot something that would make them laugh or giggle. Or that. Oh, I did that. <laughs> yes. And, uh, that has happened to you. Of yeah. course it did. But, oh, yeah. Uh, so it, it, it was all understood, of course, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah. accepted as, 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 as part of life. So uh, uh, another thing then, um, <coughs> Peter, of course, at Mass, uh, you went to pray and to uh, get the help from God. Um we mentioned the rosary, the holy water, the sacred heart picture, and so on, and confession. And that brings us back again then, of course, to the brown scapular. And I want you to tell me uh, where you got the brown scapular first. <coughs> I don't know where I got the brown scapular first, but I suppose I know that when the missionaries would come, to the missioner, everything the missionaries would come, they'd be enrolled in the little brown scapular, and um, any of them want to be involved, they get them and there's piece, we get the bronze scapulars from the missioners. Yes. So I probably got it there first. In Karaginima. In Karaginima, yeah. Probably, yeah. And uh, do, do you remember, um, was there a, a little cabin uh, where sometimes people used to follow around the missionaries um, and they would have a little cabin or a small little, uh, well, cabin, I suppose, in which they would sell rosary beads yes, and, that's right. and miraculous medals that's right. and that sort of yeah. thing. <clears throat> so it's probably uh, on an occasion like that that they, I think you said your mother got it for you. and um, you Very were, probably, you, like my mother always, would always tell us that we should wear the bronze scapula. Yes, yes. Yes. Very good. Uh, <clears throat> okay. Young people nowadays... Uh, a lot of them don't believe in God at all, and uh, clearly you do believe in God, and um, the experience of your life has helped you to believe in God. Yes, I that's suppose. right. Yeah. And, uh, would mm-hmm. you encourage people to wear the brown scapula? Well, sure. It like I said, I, the the man that was that wasn't even a Catholic, but that he he wore the brown scapula and said one hail Mary every day. Yes. He didn't. Our Lady. Came to him, but he died, and he was saved. At the end of his day. At the end of the day, yes. yes. Okay. Now, um, Peter, I am very interested in this uh, book, uh, little booklet, and um, I think that you said you would uh, give me one. So oh, if, yeah. if you'd like to do that, and um, the scapular Definitely, uh, yeah. uh, uh, as well. So, uh, I give so the, I'm, I'm very book grateful. The the yeah, very, very grateful for that, and, and, and thank you very much. Okay. I'm also very grateful for uh, you uh, coming to, to share your story with us. Um, before we go, is there anything else you would like to, to add to what you have said already? So. I can't think of anything else. Maybe I can't think of anything else that 
Det var så att jag tänkte ju det blir på det kan tänka något om det. Yes, I, I think we've covered all the important I'd parts and so. the key thing is anyway you are firmly convinced that your life are uh, you suddenly saved from injury or possibly that your life was saved by the brown scapular? Oh yeah. You are uh, suddenly considering the possibility that your home uh, was oh, definitely by the Our Lady of Mount Carmel, That's and you're right, definite yeah. about that. Oh, yeah. Should um, the calendar is there to prove that it wasn't touched yes, in the fire? Yes, yes. That's mm-hmm. quite extraordinary that it's, it's absolutely so, uh, it's so clean, uh, so clean, no sign of smoke forever. And um, you did make a promise, and you felt uh, a sense of gratitude in yourself, and you wanted to promote the uh, scapular. The brown scapula, but you didn't for a long time until oh, uh, yes. you got a second reminder That's right. in the farm of the fire in your home and the clear evidence of the um, that the calendar of Our Lady Mount Carmel uh, escaped completely undamaged. So, uh, Peter, uh, I want to thank you very much indeed. Uh, this evening we have heard one man's testimony. His testimony to the fact that God's help can be accessed by various means. He said the rosary at home, the prayers, the holy water, the sacred heart picture, and so on. But also his particular firm belief that he was saved from serious injury or death by the higher power of God, which was made present to him by means of the brown scapula. And Peter had been wearing the brown scapula for more years than he can remember. So he has, as Our Lady said, and asked, worn it perpetually. So Peter Roach, thank you for sharing your experiences with us. Thank you very much, this, Joe. Thank you for doing it. Yeah. Yeah. Of, and thanks to Danger for doing it. Thank you, Peter. So that concludes this episode of our series in a story that should be told. Peter I'm very grateful to you. Thank, thank you, you very, thank much, you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you.